Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Look MRI, and this is a 64-year-old female who has history of a recent falling injury. She was shown to have a fracture on this x-ray through the greater tuberosity. And to get oriented here, this is the glenoid, part of the scapula. Here's the humeral head, the articular surface. And over on the outside, lateral side, this is the greater tuberosity, and we see an area of lucency. This is a ill-defined fracture line. The rotator cuff comes over attaches right here on this flat part. So this may be an avulsion type fracture at the rotator cuff attachment on this footprint here. Or this could be related to a dislocation where this um, impacts down here when they dislocate. So the orthopedic surgeon who saw the patient ordered an MRI following arthrogram. And this x-ray is from that arthrogram procedure. And this is the final image that shows a tube coming down filled with contrast. This is the needle here, this well-defined linear thing. We see some foggy stuff here. This is the contrast within the glenohumeral joint. Here's that fracture again on the outside. Now these are images from the MRI that was done after the arthrogram. And we see the fracture is over here. It does not show up as well on MRI as it does on x-ray. But we do see that there's brightness out here. This is marrow edema associated with this fracture. Put up another view. This is a fat suppressed protein density sequence. We see contrast in the joints filled here. We see this marrow edema in the greater tuberosity. We just don't see the fracture uh, lines as well, but we know that there has been an, an injury here with a non-displaced fracture. The rotator cuff, the supraspinatus comes over here and the attachment here. We see there's a high grade partial thickness tear on the under surface. So it's not completely torn, but we see contrast going up underneath here. And we just see a, a small thin rim of tissues along the bursal surface hanging on, so a high-grade partial thickness undersurface tear. We see some brightness over the bursal surface here. This is in the subacromial subdeltoid bursa. We see brightness, so you wonder, could there be a full thickness tear and contrast is leaking out? So we're going to go to another sequence where we can see fluid that has contrast as bright and fluid that does not have contrast as intermediate or low. So this is a T1 sequence in contrast that's been injected will be very bright. We see it's all contained within the joint. We see the contrast coming here underneath into that high grade partial thickness undersurface tear of the rotator cuff, but we don't see any contrast leaking out over the top. This is a view where fluid, whether it has contrast or not, is bright. So this is fluid in the subacromial subdeltoid bursa, but there's not contrast in here because we don't see it over here. So this indicates that there's no full thickness tear of the rotator cuff no leaking of contrast or extraversation outside. And so that's why we do these arthrograms, because it helps um, tell if there's a full thickness perforation, is there contrast leaking out? And in this case, there's not. Also, we can see tears of the labrum better. And in this patient, they do have a tear of the labrum, the anterior and the inferior labrum. We see a little linear band of contrast right here. And we can see that a little bit better on this view. This is an axial view where the front is here. This is the outside, and here's the back of the shoulder. We see the humeral head. We see the cup that sits in here, the glenoid. And we can see the labrum, which is a little dark band of tissue that goes around the periphery of the rim. This is the posterior labrum. And the anterior labrum should be here, but we don't see it. It looks like it's torn and it's uplifted. This is a little piece of the anterior labrum. So this is a detached tear of the anterior labrum, and the labral fragment is uplifted. We see two things right here next to each other. One is the middle glenohumeral ligament here. And the other thing is the anterior labral tissues that are torn and uplifted. On this view here, we can see the labral fragment. And this is part of the joint capsule. So we call this the capsulolabral complex. We can see that the labral fragment is torn. It's uplifted. It's a detached tear. We see the contrast going underneath that. This is the bone. Also, the anterior joint capsule is thick and irregular. So this is capsuloperiosteal stripping. It's partially stripped from the anterior scapula here. So this is a, a tear that's uh, very significant, and the surgeon is going to have to go in there and try to tack that back down and try to repair this rotator cuff.